Hello, everyone. Let me welcome you to the next section, Avant-Garde Technologies for Inclusion, where we're going to hear from different experts worldwide developing different technologies for people with disabilities. We'll understand their background, what they've done, where they're aiming. I'll, I'll start. I'm one of the entrepreneurs who's creating technologies for inclusion. My company's name is Lazarillo, a company which is supporting people with visual disabilities to have higher independence on a daily basis. I'll like to start with Rodrigo's case. When I met Rodrigo, he was 32 and he always had to go to the doctor with someone else by his side. And when he went with himself by himself, he could take it could take him up to two hours. And then with Lazarillo, instead of taking him two hours, it took him half an hour. Now we'll introduce our this technology. What we do is to create tools for independence, allowing us to connect opportunities for development and improving the well being and power economic power and people this is an app that allows them to go through the city and now we'll tell you we'll show you a video lasadio is a free app which allows millions of people mainly with visual disabilities to move independently and autonomy through cities all over the world despite we've developed a navigational system that is accessible for companies and institutions in open and closed spaces this is a very easy to use and implement technology welcome to centro medico san joaquin it allows for anyone to have every information available to move autonomously and independently in the facilities and this is with intuitive signs and information about what is in the surrounded bathrooms 48 meters ahead and it guides you to go from point a to point b and interact with the place all of this in multiple languages and in a very completely accessible way our team continues to work every day adding new and better functionalities to improve the lives of people with disabilities but of anyone who needs to who needs it Lazarillo is a free app for the users. It, is, it has been working in multiple countries and it's been translated to over 20 languages and it works for Android and iPad. but it has over 200,000 users worldwide and it grows every day. It improves the life quality of people. Bianca Hernandez tells us excellent app it has facilitated my life i am 100 percent blind i lost my vision uh, not long ago and thanks to the app i can move around and orient myself the aim is to create inclusive environments with different for people with different disabilities it adapts to the needs of the user if anyone needs a more accessible form of the app they can have it and they can have interpretation through a service and communicate after the pandemic Lazarillo, well during the pandemic we also evolved we created new features for digital spaces Lazarillo could be a channel for people with disabilities to access information and also to have systems with more assistance for online shopping. It was necessary pre-pandemic, but after it, it became much more necessary to receive information in a more accessible way, which is why we have had different collaborations with INC in Colombia and Senales in Chile, where we can disseminate information from the government to people with disabilities. We've also had integrations with different video assistance services with different functionalities. For example, assistance for online shopping with different companies. Lazarillo is a rather versatile tool and it allows you to do many things. For example, to guide you through giant 
university campus and so on. With that, I finished my presentation. If you would like to find out more about this, you can contact me or visit our website, lazarillo.app. Bueno, eh, eso fue la presentación de Lazarillo. That was Lazarillo's app. And now we'll leave you with Henry Mejia. He has experience in administration and public policies for people with disabilities. He's promoted changes for a better social inclusion of deaf people. He's worked for 30 years in the National Federation of Deaf People in Colombia and he's worked with people with disabilities in this country and he has developed experience in the management of groups in areas such as leadership and he's actively participated in generating policies in the government creating special programs i will leave you with henry mejia with Hinesco. Buenos días para todos. Good morning, everyone. Estoy muy contento de I am truly happy to be able to participate in this instance. I would like to share Relevo, the center which facilitates access to communication for deaf people. How does Centro de Relevo begin? Well, it's an initiative from the National Federation of Deaf People in Colombia, FENASCOL, a nonprofit organization. And nationwide, we have 37 federal associations, and Centro de Relevo began in 2001. With the end of deaf people being able to participate and access information thanks to the information technologies, among others. 20 years ago, deaf people faced multiple barriers at a national level. How to communicate on the phone? Well, they would have to depend on a family member or a friend and not many interpreters existed at the time. The family did not know sign language, so that was a barrier, which is why Centro de Relevo was created and it started to use technology. Technology has evolved. In 2001, we first used phones called TTY, which had keyboard but the problem was that deaf people 20 years ago well education was not of quality it was very poor indeed and they didn't know spanish very well so it took them a while to write down the messages they wanted to convey then it evolved that in 2009 communication through video call began and it improved and in 2014 because in the past it was only to make calls but and, and many deaf people would say, well, okay, I can have video calls, but when I meet someone else and we're in the same space, probably at home or with my family, I would like to have interpretation and communicate myself, so communicate to others. So uh, in 2014, the visual interpretation service CL was created in 2017, the video messages WhatsApp appeared, this voice notes that you can send and deaf people would say, well, you said they sent a, a voice note and how do we do to send videos instead of WhatsApp notes, they send videos and the interpreter receives this information on video and creates a voice to then send this audio voice notes to reply this model has been implemented in several countries and we've done the consulting in paraguay and the implementation process uh, happened and then last year it was implemented in bolivia next one okay 
Centro de Relevo is an innovative project and it truly allows an adjustment, a reasonable adjustment, allowing to delete or to get rid of the communication barriers for deaf people and have them participate in different spaces. They can be uh, called from on the phone from anywhere and this doesn't involve any costs at all it's a free app and the government subsidizes 95 percent of this project if it, the deaf people in colombia travel to other country can visit the centro de relevo in colombia absolutely free of charge as well The Centro de Relevo facilitates communication in context, like in the family context, work context, academic, telemedicine, uh, whenever you're doing air, running errands or, or for services with public or private institutions. And it's become the first communicational channel between deaf people and people who can hear nationwide. This started in 2014 and so far 3,911,702 double or two-way communications using the interpretation service. The beneficiaries, the recipients of the service are 56,928 and services of online interpretation when they meet people in a physical space and they use this interpretation remotely. The users have been so far 125,290. These services are absolutely free of charge and they work 24 hours a day, including the holidays. It works 365 days of the year. Next one. I would like to show you a success case and how it works also for a deaf person in a working environment. We know that within this pandemic context, people now are teleworking or they're working at home. So in order to meet with the rest of the colleagues, how do people do it? I'd like to show you this video. Hola, buenas tardes. Mi nombre es... Hi, good afternoon. My name is Fabian Bravo. I live in Barranquilla City and I work in the Transit Secretariat for 13 years now. Despite what's happening with COVID-19, we've been informed that we'll have to work from home during this lockdown. And it, they also told us that they needed to meet with us through Zoom platform. I thought how difficult it would be to communicate with them in these virtual meetings. And thanks to the online interpretation service of CL, I am quite at ease. I don't have to I don't have to worry about having an interpreter. I can use this system to communicate with my colleagues at our Zoom meetings. And this, of course, is very calming and makes me truly happy. Thank you. As you just watched in the video, we see that the Centro de Relevo facilitates the communication for deaf people, not only in working environments, but for instance, there are people who are seeking a job and they can use this service for job interviews using the online interpretation service through the app, the CL app that they download on their phones, and then they can have remote interpretation services or if, if they want to use it in family context, this 
app has facilitated tremendously the communication which is overarching in every stage of life so they can participate in equal conditions deaf people are basically foreigners in our own land right in our own countries so we speak a different language and we have the sign language for that in our case it's the colombian sign language which is acknowledged or recognized by the state and thanks to that recognition as the official language of for the deaf community being colombian sign language the government funds the project and the community can participate in optimal conditions We previously mentioned that this project is funded in 95% by the national government and 5% by the National Federation of Deaf People in Colombia, FINESCO, and it intervenes in the public policies, state public policies. This continues, this won't close, this project is, has already become a state policy. What we want for the future is to have more budget, uh, higher budget at the time. We have 40 interpreters to serve in this and uh, provide their services, but we want to implement this throughout Latin America. If countries require consulting, we from FINESCO would be of course, very happy to help you as we've done with Paraguay as leaders. And thank you so much for this invitation and allowing us to present this center because it is a, indeed a very important platform to facilitate the communication of deaf people and to have active participation in all spaces in a cross-cutting fashion. Thank you so much. Bueno, excelente presentación de Henry Mejía de Penascol. Excellent Ahora, presentation from Henry. And now I'll leave you with Henry and the staff with Sync Lab. He's the founder of the startup, creating digital learning tools for sign language becoming more accessible. Now it could be a in the hands of half people around the world by 2022 and 2019 it received the prize the award of the olympiad for special people hi everyone i'm andre uh, and thank you for inviting me uh, to uh, this meeting and thank you for inviting me to present uh, we are actively looking to expand into Latin America, so it's especially exciting to present for you today. And what we are doing at Sign Lab is that we are making sign language accessible to everyone. And as you might know, sign language today is not something that most parents to deaf children are able to learn. In Norway, where I come from, four, three out of four parents are unable to learn sign language well enough, such that it does not adversely affect their own children. And in emerging market, that is estimated to be much, much worse, with less than one in 10 parents to deaf children able to learn sign language. The problem that we are tackling is why is it that parents are unable to learn something so widely that will actually help them to communicate freely with their own child the way that we have done with our parents? And the reason why is that Currently, sign language is unavailable to either sign language taught in brick and mortar schools, which are very few and far between, or if they want to give you a substitute for that, they would typically still today give you a book. And those books are like uh, trying to teach you to dance uh, Argentinian tango with a book. It just doesn't work that way. And it affects a lot of parents, more than 60 million parents around the world have a child that is either deaf or hard of hearing to such an extent that sign language would be very beneficial. And that is why we are developing Toleo, which is our learning app for sign language. Toleo builds on innovative, well-proven learning technologies that helps you play around with whatever you are trying to achieve with your child. 
So if your child is, let's say, three years old, it has very different communicational needs than, let's say, that he's a teenager. So this app will then take a, a parent in. It will help them together with their spouse or friends or other family and their child to figure out what they will need in this particular stage of life to facilitate a good communication, good learning, uh, and the best possible family life and upbringing for this child. So here it presents a friendly interface that can be used by parents that, that enjoy it, but also children. So if they have siblings, they're absolutely welcome to join. And what you do is that you learn through play. Originally, we tried this to be a sit down and study for 20 minutes or sit down in a classroom setting and study this for half an hour. But that is not what the active parent or the active person today would like. They would like to have certain sessions throughout the day where they can take five minutes in the queue to the supermarket or five minutes on the commute to work and brush up on exactly what they need in the moment. So here you learn true play in a fun and engaging manner. Our goal is to make this so fun that a classmate or a colleague or just anyone would find it fun to use this app and learn sign language in their national sign language. And we are building in artificial intelligence to try to knock down exactly what the user has learned and what they would are about to forget in such a way that you use those five to 10 to 20 minutes spread throughout the day where you're learning sign language in the very best manner that we can. And on top of that, we do try to aid the parents, especially, but also others, to use sign language at least once a day. So throughout this course and throughout the use of your app, the app will then actively challenge to use sign language in daily conversation, such as asking them how their day was, how was school today, or what would you like for dinner? And that can then, over the years, progress into how is it that there are tunnels on the moon? How large are they? And would our house fit there? And the answer is yes, it would. And if you are on the move, on the go, and you are forgetting that one sign, that one concept that you're trying to communicate, you can look that up in our dictionary. And that works as well on the phone as it will in your Apple Watch or any device that you have close by. So our goal for the application, and that I think we have and are on our way to achieving, is that we are improving access to learning sign language. We lower the cost, and at the same time, we are improving learning outcomes. And that satisfies what we call triple A rating for educational part. And our users agree, where they say that this is a course that fits everyone. A seventh grade teacher says that this, she tested this out with her class and said that they were engaged and wanted to learn more. And this was a seventh grade class that had one part of hearing student that used sign language and the rest were hearing. And they loved it. Absolutely loved it. And that is something that warms our and a parent to a deaf child says that this is exactly what she has been looking for as a mom to her family. Our user growth in Norway has been great. We are now more than 20,000 users in Norway, which is significant given that our native signing population is around 10,000. We have not spent anything on marketing. This is purely through word of mouth growth, uh, specifically through mom groups and dad groups uh, and parents groups in Norway. And we have now crossed the threshold of more than 1 million signs learned, which we think is fantastic. We are now about 50% uh, of all new signs learned in Norway is probably learned for our company. And our business model is threefold. So we have long-term government contracts in countries such as Norway that has a strong social security net. Mm -hmm. In other markets, let's say such as the UK, where I'm now, we probably have a subscription model where some of the content is free for everyone, uh, and some of the content would be premium. But we are also going into markets that are economically unsustainable. That would be markets such as Pakistan, or it could be Vietnam, where we are collaborating with great non-for-profit organizations to fund our work such as we can go there. And we have recently received funding from NORAD, which is the equivalent, Norwegian equivalent of USA, to go into India and Indonesia and China 
are fantastically great and complex countries to without solution. It's important to note that we, in addition to being an organization, also want to bring up local deaf association, local sign language teachers in the countries in which we operate. So our goal is that this could be used as a textbook in a sign language class. And that the user base that we have in each country, let's say that we are now in Chile uh, and that you are in a small city in Chile and you wonder as a sign language teacher, how many people around me would like to learn sign language? With our app in Chile, you would then be able to see, reach out to us and ask, in my one hour driving distance from the venue where I will uh, be teaching, how many people are using the app? And we can then send out an invitation to our users on our app to that particular sign language course. And in that way, we hope to empower deaf organizations and bring them up with us with a great teaching tool and a way to increase their own revenues. Our current goal is that we are launching in China today, uh, India in a couple of weeks, and Indonesia in a couple of months. And from here, we want to go to major European markets as well as Latin America. And if you are watching and you would like to uh, partner up with us, please do reach out to me. And our goal is to reach more than 60% of the world's population uh, within the next two years. We have a great team uh, of technologists, sign language teachers, educators, theorists, and of course, we have a fantastic drive and love for sign language. Thank you for watching our presentation today. Uh, if you want to reach out uh, and see if we can get a partnership going, please do so at the email below. Thank you. Thank you so much, Andre Elvestad with SingLab. Excellent presentation. And now we'll go with Ersin Giray, with over 10 years in company experience, CEO and founder of Boy Labs, creating accessibility for people with visual disability in Turkey. And now the floor is all yours. Hi, I am Arsene and I'm founder of Poi Labs. Thank you for inviting me to this uh, conference. It's an honor to be here to share our solutions. So uh, before founding Poi Labs, uh, I was uh, during my university education, I went into an NGO that was aiming to create blind role models. I was closely working with the blind from different age groups. At that time, I learned their needs and daily challenges. After graduation, I've worked in different companies to gain experiences in business. And to, in 2015, we founded Poi Labs with my friend from that NGO to help the visually impaired. So we founded Poi Lab in order to increase the social life and mobility of visually impaired and blind people by creating accessible venues. So as you all, may all know that uh, there are more than 200 million people with uh, visually impairment and around 36 million uh, blind people. So their uh, main challenge is navigating around places and it is even more challenging in indoor spaces. So we developed an indoor navigation solution. In our solution, we have beacons. These are uh, Bluetooth sensors. We install them inside the venues and we also map the venue. Then we have the mobile application the signals from those sensors are collected by the mobile application and we use the sensors inside the smart devices and locate the users indoors. And the only thing the user do is download the uh, mobile application from the app stores. So we have different features. So first, the uh, blind can search for the venues and stores. There's a free move mode and it, it, helps, uh, it helps the visually impaired to be independent and they can freely move inside venues. They are notified when they uh, pass uh, by a store like Zara is on your right hand side and they sell fashion and floor level one. They can get turn by turn navigation. First, a brief uh, info about the route is provided and during the route they are notified about each step like turn after 100 meters, go straight. 
and they they are always alerted when they are in the wrong way and they can get redirection by simply shaking their mobile devices they are also notified when they are they arrive their destination turning points or elevators in museums they also get description and story of the art pieces they can enjoy life and be social as others and do not depend on others uh, with our with our solution in stores they can also learn about the promotions and special offers currently our solution is available in turkey in 12 cities and more than 100 venues like malls museums university campuses stores and exhibitions we have 200000 users for the service we are one of a one of the leading solution providers in the world with one of the largest number of accessible venues we are continuously improving our solutions with the needs of the visually impaired users so we have a business a b2b business model first the venue owners pay a monthly subscription starting from $10 per month. We also have sponsors. For example, in Turkey, we have Turkcell. So they both provide uh, funds for us and also they can reach the end users. So we do not need to spend on marketing to reach visually impaired people. In addition to that, we also provide additional services using the same technology. So we provide indoor navigation with map, location-based marketing, and staff tracking for workplace safety. With those, we made the business sustainable and growing from that day because when we started uh, in, F, in, in the first, it was very challenging us to find venue owners willing to pay for the service. So with the help of these additional services, we expand very fastly. So, as I mentioned, we have more than 100 venues accessible. And last year, even the, uh, despite the negative effects of uh, the pandemic, we managed to reach $350,000. And uh, we have our solution help visually impaired to attend life more. Uh, for example, the venues have three times more visually impaired visitors as before the service is available. So this, this year we launched a new uh, brand called, called Blind Doors as our global brand. We are now planning to expand our solution globally. Firstly, we will add some small enhancements in our solution. And in Q3, we will add a low vision mode for partially sighted individuals. And in Q4, we will launch our platform so every venue owner can make their venue accessible without need of our help. They will even use other sensors from different vendors. This will help us uh, to scale more rapidly. In, lo in long, term, long term, we plan to add augmented reality for obstacle detection and will include outdoor support for different places like university campuses and other uh, hybrid uh, venues. So currently, I mean, pandemic was a very big challenge for us because first the indoor spaces were closed and that hurt our revenues and we cannot uh, travel ex globally. But despite the negative effects, we managed to grow in that uh, period of time. So we will believe it will be much better at the end of the year and we will start growing uh, globally. So we plan to reach 1000 uh, venues in two years, starting from the Europe Europe and uh, Middle East and North, North Africa region. And we believe we can achieve this with your help. If you uh, want your venues accessible, you can reach us. And thank you for time and listening for us. Thank you. Great presentations. Thank you so much for all the experts that are participating. Now we're going to have a dialogue with those experts to know their story. So I'm going to start with Henry. Henry, I want to ask you, what have been the challenges to implement Fenascol in Colombia? Can you tell us about the context and tell us how you've overcome? Because it is amazing. Bueno, eh, primero un saludo para todos y muy agradecido de estar en este espacio. Eh, Fenascol, les contaré un poco de sus inicios. Eh, nosotros el Centro de Relevo lo iniciamos en el año 2001. 
Este centro de relevo realmente ha beneficiado la accesibilidad de las personas sordas y la accesibilidad de manera transversal. Of transversal. La mayor barrera que nosotros sentimos como personas sordas es la barrera que enfrentamos en la comunicación, en la salud, en el trabajo, en la educación y demás. Por eso requerimos de... This is why we require of the service of interpretation. And this is why this center comes up to make the reasonable adjustments for deaf people in Colombia. Great, thank you so much. In that aspect, what was the biggest challenge? Was it easy, maybe? Can you please repeat the question? What was the biggest challenge to implementing FENASCOL? Bueno, um, well, cuando inicia el centro de relevo, when the, this relief center started from Fenescol to implement this center was because from the government, from its budget, the person who assigns the budget to carry out this project from Fenescol was a constant struggle to be able to acquire so deaf people can have availability because there were so many barriers. And this center facilitates and allows availability. So the biggest difficulty was the budget, to manage the budget because it, it had to do with incidents and struggle in Colombia. And the, the, they remained in public policies from state. So from the public policies, you receive the financing. But now we have over 20 years working and FENASCOR I had that struggle until we managed to achieve this budget and this project, therefore, is still working without barriers for anyone. For example, this in job interviews is very important because deaf people live with their barriers, but now they can do this course for online interpreting that allows communication for all environments. Great, thank you very much. Now I'm going to go with Endre from Sign Lab. Can you tell us about the challenges about creating Sign Lab? Can you tell us about your context? What are the biggest challenges that you've had? Thank you, Renee. Um, yeah, as I, as I told in my presentation, we started from the vantage point of trying to understand parents. These are hearing parents to deaf children and the barriers that they face giving their children the access to communication, the access to knowledge, the access to schooling that they would otherwise have. So going out of Norway, which is, you know, Northern Europe, uh, and going into the context which we are now in, which would be China, India, Indonesia, and hopefully Latin America moving forward, it's very different. So the cultural adaptation in each country is by far the most difficult thing that we are currently facing, currently doing. Also, that I'm wondering if Henry would agree that the lack of research on each country's sign language, sign language is of course not international, Every, most countries have their own sign language, and the lack of research about how those are is also a barrier for us to implement rigorous, good learning programs for sign language. Wow. Yes, I can see the different cultures, how the different sign languages change, and there, there's not a lot of documentation. I understand the barrier, but it's a great thing that you're dealing with this, you're coping with this. I'm very glad. And now we can go to Ersin, so he can tell us about his challenges, how it's been this project in Turkey and your project in your country. What are your biggest challenges? Hi, Rene. Thank you for the question. So, in fact, we have maybe two main challenges. The first one is finding suitable venues. So, in short, Poi Labs creates accessible venues. So, we have our technology, as I uh, discussed earlier. So, finding uh, venues that are willing to pay for the service was one of our challenge. And the second was to reach the visually impaired people because 
they are generally isolated from the life. They cannot go outside easily, and most of them are unemployed, so they cannot attend to life as others. So the first one, we solved the problem by just searching for the venues, and we start with the malls, and we try to uh, provide additional services on top of that. So we are providing indoor navigation for the visually disabled, but also we started uh, providing indoor navigation with map for the other customers inside the mall. So then they are they became willingly to pay for the service. And for reaching the visually impaired, we partnered with a sponsor in Turkey. It's a, one of the largest mobile operators. So they have a customer base that, uh, that have uh, visually impaired. So they launched a mobile application uh, for them, not only uh, the indoor navigation service, but also audiobooks and other uh, additional services. So with that, we reached uh, almost all the visually impaired people in Turkey. So we uh, overcome those challenges by finding uh, partners and creating additional services. Thank you. Perfecto. Eh, muchas gracias. Perfect. Thank you, everyone, for sharing your challenges. And I would like to ask about the future because the pandemic has surely made your services to be more adaptable. So I would like to know what are the new challenges? What are you aiming at? How do you hope to grow? And let's follow the, the same order. Henry. Maybe you can tell us how you expect Fenascol to grow. Well, the projections that we have for the future is that, first of all, I want to clarify Fenascol. It's a non-profit organization, and we, we belong to a project of the Relief Center. This center is the one that allows the communication from one platform or websites or app with people with hearing impairments. So we want this model to be replicated in Latin America, and we want other countries to implement this project. Another dream of ours is that the budget is increased for facilitating communication on a national level so that every person with hearing impairment can use this. This relief center is in all the country around 800 municipalities. We have 1,000 and the goal is to reach all of these municipalities. So we have total coverage in the country. The improvement of technology is another important aspect. Viven en otros países y pueden hacer uso de este servicio. Entonces, el reto es que esta plataforma vaya creciendo, vaya mejorando y sea también implementada a nivel Latinoamérica. En muchos países, porque a veces las personas sordas no tienen acceso ni accesibilidad en los diferentes espacios. Y como te mencionaba anteriormente, la comunicación es transversal a la salud, a la educación, al trabajo y demás. Estas son nuestras proyecciones. Eh, René, ¿nos está escuchando? El micrófono. Perdón, perdón, me está en mute. Eh, bueno, muchas gracias, Henry, por la respuesta. Eh, Thank you so much, Henry, for your answer. It's interesting how you've managed the different challenges. Now I would like to give the floor to Andre and to Ersin that are startups. For those who don't know, 
sometimes a startup can have a social impact, but also have profitable that is sustainable and can grow and it can generate incomes for improving innovation and keep growing. So, Andre, can you tell us what are the steps for SignLab? SignLab, I think we entered a very interesting uh, point in time where last year when COVID hit for the first time, suddenly we see this huge increase in users. So the, that we have in one year gone maybe 10 years into the future in terms of adapting learning technologies for sign language and for educational general has helped us tremendously. So moving forward, we have dual goals. We want to make learning sign language, especially for parents and families to deaf children, more accessible, affordable, and efficient. And we want to reach more than 60% of the world's deaf population within two years. So that is a goal that we are on our way to achieving. We are launching in China today. Uh, we will launch in uh, India in a couple of weeks. Uh, and from there, we hope to go to Indonesia. Uh, and I, as I said in the previous question, Latin America as well. The second goal is to leverage our model to be an affiliate partnership model in different countries, such that this will benefit local deaf associations as well, and individual sign language teachers and individual deaf people. So those dual goals is what we hope to, hope to achieve over the next two to five years. Great, thank you. Great and interesting challenges. Very ambitious. I think that's great. And the Ersin, can you tell us what are your main challenges for Boy Labs? Of course. So the first one, as we all faced, the pandemic did not affect very well for us because we are serving the indoor space. And during the lockdowns, all the indoor spaces were closed. So it was very challenging for us. Our first target is to expand our solutions globally. Currently, our solution is only available in Turkey. So in the after the pandemic, probably we will we hope it will end at the end of this year. So we will start with Europe and plan to reach 1,000 uh, venues in four countries in less than two years. And the secondly, we have to have uh, new technologies in order to uh, provide better service for us uh, for the visually impaired. So first, we are planning to launch an e-platform uh, before the end of the year. So every venue can. Uh, make the venues accessible using our platform easily so they can buy the sensors, the beacons as we use from other companies and just set up using our platform. And second, we also working with different technologies other than our current one. So we provide, we will provide better in indoor accuracy because in some cases, the obstacles and maybe small places like stores, they need better indoor accuracy to provide a uh, better experience for the visually impaired. So we uh, are planning to enhance our indoor positioning technology. Thank you. Genial, muchas gracias. Great, thank you so much. These are very interesting challenges. Hopefully you will be successful. And thank you everyone that's participating in this panel. Thank you so much. And keep enjoying the different events from Zero Project. Please keep informed about this. Now I say farewell. Hopefully you have a great day. Goodbye. Hasta luego.